live in Ellensburg, it's good to look out the window and wave at you in your vehicles this morning, and you can listen to the service from there. It's uh, trying times that for everybody, but the uh, most important thing is that we just stay safe and try to keep others around us safe. No one understands why the Lord's allowing this virus to go around the world, but we know he's too wise to make a mistake. He always does that which is right, and he loves us too much to hurt us unnecessarily. So we'll just go ahead and trust him, do what we have to do. But in the meantime, there are several things that we can do for each other, even though we can't have uh, open church services right now during this time. We can always keep up with each other by telephone and by sending cards when they're necessary. And then we can always pray, pray for one another and pray for our leadership that God would give them wisdom to make the right decisions to help us. And then we can always give I'm really thankful for the way you folks have given this month and sent your tithe and offerings to the church. And of course, uh, we have a mailman that will make sure that your offering gets to the church and he'll make sure it gets to the right people, it gets recorded, and we sure do thank you for your giving and trust you to continue to give. Just send it to Ellisburg Baptist Church, 88 Long Hollow Road, Houstonville, 40437. Oh, God's good. So we'll just go ahead and trust him. Hey, did you hear about the fella? I think his name was Clem to Diddlehopper or something like that. His wife's graveside service was just barely finished when there was a massive clap of thunder, followed by a tremendous bolt of lightning, accompanied by even more thunder, rumbling in the distance. The little old hen-pecked husband looked at me and calmly said, well, looks like she just got there. Oh, me. John chapter eight. I want to ask you a question this morning. What if it's true? John chapter 8, verse 44, Jesus is talking to the Pharisees, that group, that religious crowd that hated him. And he looked at them and he said, You're of your father, the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. And because I tell you the truth, you believe me not. Now the word of God came directly from God in its absolute truth. And every time you look at the Bible, I want you to understand that that is the truth. Absolute truth from God. He said, which of you convinces me of sin? And if I say the truth, why do you not believe me? Well, that's a good question. Why don't folks believe him today? He that is of God heareth God's word. Ye therefore hear them not, because ye are not of God. Then answered the Jews and said unto him, Say ye not well that thou art a Samaritan, and hast the devil? Jesus answered, I have not a devil, but I honor my father, and ye do dishonor me. And I seek not mine own glory, there is one that seeketh and judgeth. Verily, verily, I say unto you, if a man keep my saying, he shall never see death. Then said the Jews unto him, Now we know that thou hast the devil. Abraham's dead, the prophets, and thou sayest, If a man keep my saying, he shall never taste of death. Art thou greater than our father Abraham, which is dead, and the prophets are dead? Who makest Thou thyself 
Jesus answered, If I honor myself, my honor is nothing. It is my Father that honoreth me. Of whom ye say that he is your God. Yet ye have not known him, but I know him. And if I should say I know him not, I shall be a liar like unto you. But I know him and keep his sayings. And this is our thought from verse 56. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it and was glad. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day. Before Abraham was, I am. You know what Jesus did just said from his word? That he is God, that he has always been. He just took time out from being God to incarnate himself as a man, came into this world for one purpose, that's to obtain salvation for each and every one of us. What if it's true? What are you going to do? Father, help us as we look at your word this morning. May it penetrate our hearts and minds and accomplish your purpose and your will. God bless our people as they hear and anyone else in Jesus' name. Amen. What does a judge instruct the jury to base their decision on? I was at a meeting a couple of months ago and they were picking a jury and the lawyer stood there before us and told us what the judge would expect out of us before he made a decision. It had to be beyond reasonable doubt. Well, what if it is true that Jesus is God and that Jesus did everything that he said he did? He's everything that he says he was and is today. What if it's true that Jesus is the creator of the world? Colossians chapter 1. Who is the image of the invisible God? God, the firstborn of every creature. He's the head. For by him, that's Jesus, were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. What, is, what if that's true? What are you going to do about it? What if it's true that Jesus was born of a virgin? John chapter 1, the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. What if it's true that Jesus lived a perfect life, fulfilled the law? He was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. What if it's true that Jesus has all power as he demonstrated here on this earth? For in him, the Bible says, dwelleth the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Ye are complete in him which is the head of all principality and power. He had power over disease. Ten lepers at one time he healed. He healed the deaf and the dumb, caused them to hear and to speak. He healed the blind, caused them to see again. He worked all kinds of miracles, fed 5,000 men plus the women and children with just five loaves and two fishes. Another time he fed 4,000 men. What about the maniac of Gadara? He cast those demons out of him. The little boy that would try to commit suicide all the time, jump in the fire or in water and drown himself, he cast the demon out of that little boy. What about all those that he healed and cast out demons and healed them from all manner of diseases? What if that's true? What are you going to do about it? 
What about disaster? Did he really step out, wake up from while he was on that boat, step out, tell the sea to lay down like a little puppy, <clears throat> stop the wind, stop the rain, the thunder, the lightning? Did he really do that? Does he have power over disease and power over disaster? Can he do all that? Well, if he can, what are you going to do about it? Does he really have power over death? Is he really the first one to be raised from the dead, never to die again, the first fruits of the resurrection to guarantee all those people that believe in him will be resurrected one of these days? Does he really have power over death? What are you going to do about it? Well, we read about the daughter of Jairus was dead, lying on her bed, in her bedroom. He walks in there, takes her by the hand and says, May, get up, rise up. And then he tells the people there, give her something to eat. He's in the little town of Nain. There's a little widow there walking down the street, leading a parade. Her only son has just died, being carried out on a bear or what we would call a um, stretcher. He saw her grief. He walks up to her son and just tells him to get up, and he gets up and takes care of his mother. What about Lazarus? Been dead for four days. He walks up to that tomb, and he says, Lazarus, come forth. And he came forth bound in clothes that they clothed the men to bury them. Is that really true? Does Jesus have power over death? What are you going to do about it? What if it's true that Jesus was born just to die? The only reason he was born, the only reason he came into this world was just to die. No other person ever lived just to die. The Bible teaches us that he did just exactly that. When old John the Baptist first saw him, he said, Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. John wrote in the book of the Revelation, The Lamb slain before the foundation of the world. Scripture teaches me that before Jesus ever created the world, he worked out this plan of salvation. And he was going to burst in upon history and live that life and die that death and be resurrected just simply to pay for my sin and your sin. If that's true, what are you going to do about it? He said, I lay down my life that I may take it again. No man taketh it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. Is that true? What are you going to do about it? He hath made him to be sin for us, who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree. Did Jesus die on the cross to pay for my sin and your sin? If he did, what are you going to do about it? What if he was resurrected from the grave? He said in John chapter 11, I am the resurrection. It's said of him in 1 Corinthians 15 that he was buried and he rose again the third day. He said in John chapter 2, you destroy this temple, my body, and in three days I'll raise it up. And in Matthew chapter 28, when the ladies went to check on him after he had been buried, and he was supposed to be laying there in the tomb, when they got there, 
the angel had rolled the stone away and he said, he's not here, he's risen. What if Jesus really rose from the grave? What if he's alive right now? What if he's the only way of salvation? What would you do about that? What if it's true that Jesus is the only way to heaven? He said, no man cometh unto the Father but by me. The scripture says this is the record that God hath given to us eternal life and this life is in his son Jesus. Is that really true? He that hath the Son hath life. He that hath not the Son of God, that's Jesus, hath not life. Is that really true? What will you do about that? He that believeth on the Son, Jesus, hath everlasting life. He that believeth not the Son shall not say life. But the wrath of God abideth or remains on him. Is that really true? That if a person rejects Jesus as their personal Savior, the wrath of God will remain on them through this world and through all eternity? It'll remain forever. It'll never be removed. The only one who can remove the wrath of God from us is Jesus Christ. Is that really true? Well, what are you going to do about it? What if it's true that Jesus will be our judge one of these days? In John chapter 5, verse 22, The Father judgeth no man, but he hath committed all judgment unto his Son Jesus. Is it true that everyone will be judged by Jesus Christ, the Son of God, God himself, we shall all stand before the judgment of Christ, that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow of things in heaven, things in earth, things under the earth, and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father, is it really true that Jesus is the judge of the whole world and that every person will stand before him one of these days, bow their knee, and confess that he is Lord to the glory of God? Well, if that's true, what are you going to do about it? Is it really true that Jesus is coming again? The Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Comfort one another with these words. Is it really true that Jesus is coming back again one of these days? He'll never set feet on the earth. He'll come in the cloud. Those Christians that have went on before us will be resurrected. Christians that remain on the earth during that time will be caught up at the same time. They'll be changed in a moment, like unto Christ. And then... The earth will go through what is determined as the tribulation period for seven years. And then after that seven years, Jesus will return, take over the earth, set up his kingdom for 1,000 years. The Bible teaches us that. Is it really true? These things that I taught you this morning from the word of God, straight from God himself? Is it really true what I've said to you? I'm convinced that it is true, and we better do something about it. It's up to us to make that choice. We have to choose that Jesus is real. The Word of God is real. Everything that the Bible teaches about Jesus is 
absolute truth. We all have to make that choice. <clears throat> Several years ago, I chose to receive Christ as my Savior. And then he called me to preach the Word of God. I'll never forget the moment. I was on a spiritual journey in Mississippi at a church camp. I walked out in the woods and I laid my Bible on a stump. And I said, Jesus, if all this is true, and the Word of God is absolute truth, then I receive you, I receive your Word as truth, and as long as I live, I will teach and preach that the Word of God is absolute truth. Every doctrine taught in it comes from the mouth of God. It is absolute truth. I believe that what I have taught you this morning is absolute truth. What are you going to do about it? It's up to each one of us to make the right choice and to choose Jesus Christ because he is the only way of salvation. Father, help us this morning to all make the right decision and we'll give you thanks and praise for giving us the grace to do so. Bless our dear people today. Protect them. Build a hedge about them. Continue to meet all their physical, spiritual, and financial needs. It's sure good to see them, even though we just wave at them in the car, but it's sure good to see them today. We love you. Thank you for loving us, and thank you for always hearing and answering prayer. In Jesus' name, amen.